Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to have you all here. It's been a busy weekend with Art in the Park and everything else that's going on. And because of Art in the Park, we have a few extra people with us today, so thank you for joining us. And it's wonderful to have you here. I made it through last weekend. I've got lots of stories to tell you. Oh. <laughs> now, I didn't catch who was the last person in for the lighting of the candle and the pouring of the water. So I think it was me. It was me. I think so. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? We're yeah. ready. All right. Resident artist. God, light of the world. Jesus, living water of life. Holy Spirit, power and divine, we praise your holy name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked on this land in their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We respectfully acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, specifically the Chippewa, Ojibwe, and Kudawatumi's people, past, present, and their emerging leaders. We also respect their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. May we promise and challenge ourselves to make truth and reconciliation real in our community of faith here and in our daily lives. Bethune and our sister church, Knox, are a safe place for all people to gather to worship, regardless of your race, creed, age, cultural backgrounds, or sexual orientations. May we honor one another and honor life itself. Are there any announcements or joyous concerns you would like to share with us today? Hmm. Need to look at that number. I think Bruce probably has something he wants to say. Yeah. yeah, check out this number on the can, friends. That August, is the August tool. 9th. August 9th. Significant date. That's amazing. Just crossover. Nice. We made it to 100,000. Congratulations, Bruce and Doug, and everyone for your contributions to the can and bottle fund. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We got the next week. Oh, man, they're here to unravel. Oh, this is a momentous occasion, right? We've got a market. Sunday I was away and it was uh, interesting because I'm sitting up getting ready to do my announcing for the horse show and the judge is there and introduces herself to me. Her name's Kendra and I asked where she was from and she said Batesville. I said, well, well that's awesome. I said, I should be in Batesville this morning. I am the minister at the church there at Bethune. And uh, she goes, oh really? She goes, and then we started talking about different people and 
My niece Nicole comes along and she goes, you two know each other? And <laughs> no. She goes, well, you would think you've been fast friends forever. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a wonderful day. I learned a lot of different horse terminology that I didn't know uh, before. And, and uh, it was just a, a pleasure to be with Kendra and to watch all of these kids, um, from the little to the big, right up to the adults. And uh, there's some of them that would go by the judge and they would go by and they're on their horse and they've got their hands just perfectly with the reins, their hands have to be even, and they would turn and they would look at the judge and give them the most award-winning smile <laughs> <laughs> and then turn their head back and continue on with their ride. Right. And I said to Kendra, I said, how can you not give extra points for that <laughs> smile? And she goes, it's, and she goes, it's quite cute actually. She said, uh, most uh, coaches and stuff will say to the kids, when you're in a show, make sure you acknowledge the judge. And the little ones take <coughs> that to heart. <laughs> <laughs> so up on the screen on the left, you see uh, that's Addie, who I call Nibla. And on the other side, not on the same day, uh, Finley didn't uh, participate in the show last Sunday because it had just been too much for his mom and dad saying that they were hosting the show. And uh, but that's from another show. He, he was done. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, it's not fine. So, <laughs> yeah. so those are, those are my uh, two little ones that I talk to you about all the time. And they're great horse people, and they just have the greatest life living on the farm with all these horses and different people that they get to interact with and some things like that. It, I couldn't think of a better place for, for two lovely kids to be raised. So. As you can tell, it's you know proud and Sue moment. So. <laughs> Sue, did you have a word of wisdom regarding a red ribbon or something? No, no, that was all Kendra. Kendra took care of that for me. Uh, it was funny though because I made my first announcement, and they had um, walkie talkies as well. And so the walkie talkie goes off, and it's Nicole. She goes, "Could you please repeat that, but uh, uh, using your guard duty voice and not your church voice?" <laughs> 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 it's okay. <laughs> I guess I was a little too passive and mild, I don't know, so we had to take it too much to yard duty voice. <laughs> I thought you would have said nay. Yeah. <laughs> you were telling me about the if there was a red ribbon on the old, horse's old tail. Oh, the red ribbon on the horse's tail, yes, yes. So I found out that if um, you're at a show or a farm and there's a red ribbon in the horse's tail, stay clear of the horse. It's, uh, it's not used to being around people or other animals, and so it's still in training. And so it could, you know, kick out at you or try to bite you or things like that. So <laughs> human, animal, doesn't matter. So if you see a horse with a red ribbon in its tail, yeah. <laughs> Stay cool. Stay cool. So, but it, it was a wonderful day. The, the weather was perfect. The kids were fantastic. Sprocket had a riot. Uh, she was up on the wagon with Kendra and I, and the kids would come over after to see her because, you know, a lot of them would go by and, <laughs> at the judge, and I'm right at, with the judge, so they came over after to see Sprocket. So it was, it was a fun day, a lot of fun. So. Were you worse yeah. after all that talking? I was. I was done. I went home, and I fell asleep on the couch. I woke up in time to feed Sprocket and myself, and I fell asleep again watching TV. And next thing you know, I might as well just get up and go to bed. <laughs> oh my goodness! But it's wonderful to be back, as always. I always miss my family here as well, so it's, it's wonderful to see everybody again. And thank you for that opportunity to spend that, that day with my family. Well, let's join in our gathering hymn for this month, Rise Up, Rise Up. <laughs>
It is God's dream of abundant life. And we are stirring to interpret its meaning. We come together to listen and wonder, to praise and celebrate. We come in hopeful anticipation to awaken our hearts to God's dream fulfilled. Let us pray. God of grace, come to us. Be among this extravagant gathering. Be within this miscellaneous cluster of people. Come to us, we pray, as Jesus came to the disciples in the story of the sea many years ago. Come to us as Reuben came to the rescue of his brother Joseph. Come to us and bring your calming touch and faithful presence into our awareness. Enter our boat and be in the midst in ways so tangible that we have no more room for doubt or fear. Come to us and anchor our confidence in your grace. Come, God of grace, bring your spirit and the spirit of our ancestors as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, let us join our voices together once again as we sing hymn number 89 for more voices. Love is the touch.
You are the eternal God. Your justice reaches every corner of the earth. You are ever mindful of your covenant, the promise you gave to a thousand generations. The covenant you made with Sarah and Abraham, the oath you gave to Isaac. You confirmed it for Jacob as binding. To Israel, your everlasting covenant, you declare. To you I give the land of Canaan as your appointed inheritance. hurt with fetters, his neck collared with iron. Until his predictions came true, your word tested him. Then the king sent and released him. The ruler of nations set him free. You made Joseph master of his house, ruler of all his possessions. To correct his officials at will. To teach his counselors wisdom. of Genesis chapter 37 verses 1 through 4 and then 12 through 28. Jacob continued to live in the land of Canaan where his father had lived and this is the story of Jacob's family. Joseph, a young man of 17, took care of the sheep and goats with his brothers, the son of Bila and Sethla, his father's concubines. He brought bad reports to his father about what his brothers were doing. Jacob loved Joseph more than all his other sons because he had been born to him when he was old. He made a long robe with full sleeves for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved jo Joseph more than they loved them, they hated their brother so much that they would not speak to him in a friendly manner. One day when Joseph's brothers had gone to Shechem to take care of their father's flock, Jacob said to Joseph, I want you to go down to Shechem where your brothers are taking care of the flock. Joseph answered, I am ready. His father told him, Go and see if your brothers are safe, and if the flock is all right. Then come back and tell me. So his father sent him on his way from Hebron Valley. Joseph arrived, and was wandering around in the country when a man saw him and asked him, What are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers, who are taking care of their flock, he answered. Can you tell me where they are? The man said, they have already left. I heard them say that they were going to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted against them and decided to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes that dreamer. Come now, let's kill him and throw his body into one of the dry wells. We can say that a wild animal killed him. Then we will see what becomes of his dreams. Reuben heard them and tried to save Joseph. Let's not kill him, he said. Just throw him in the well in the wilderness, but don't hurt him. He said this, planning to save him from them and send him back to his father. <coughs> when Joseph came up to his brothers, they ripped off his long robe with full sleeves. They took him and threw him into a well, which was dry. While they were eating, they suddenly saw a group of Ishmaelites traveling from Gilead to Egypt. Their camels were loaded with spices and resins. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain by killing our brother and covering it up, and covering up the murder? Let's sell him to these Ishmaelites. Then we won't have to hurt him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. And when some Midianite traders came by, the brothers pulled Joseph out of the well and sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites. Who took him to Egypt. May the Spirit bless yes, us with wisdom and wonder, wonder as we honor the meaning of these words for our lives. Man, it's one thing not to get along with your siblings, but that takes it to a whole new extreme, doesn't it? <laughs> well, how does the future you imagine for yourself make a difference in the choices you make today? Remember, there's no wrong answer.
Well, lately at our place, the conversation has been around retiring and pensions. <laughs> <laughs> and just how are we going to do that? And how are we going to get by? And my mom's main concern right now is her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She is a news junkie and has the news on pretty much 24-7 and reads all the Maclean's and different magazines and things like that. And she said, you know, I'm really worried about the kids, meaning the grandkids. Um, you know, what, what are they going to do? They're, they're saying that they'll never own their own house. And I said, well, that's probably a very true bet, Mom. And I said, just be like renting it the whole time. I said, things aren't like they were back in the 50s where everybody, that was the goal, to have a house, right? Start your family and do this and do that. I said, things have changed a little bit. She goes, well, that's why I'm making sure they'll have some money from me and my will so that they can at least have a chance to do this. And I said, well, that's very, very kind of you, Mom. I'm sure they will truly appreciate that from you. So she's making these thoughts and these choices. So, yeah. you know, she's, she's planning ahead. Stacy, Steve, and I, we're also planning ahead for Mom and Alan as well. You know, as they get older, Mom's 84, Alan's 89, he'll be 90 in December. What's going to happen to them? So we have come to the conclusion that we will take care of them when the time comes. We're not going to have them enter a nursing home or anything like that, unless it is absolutely medically necessary, but we're going to take care of them. So that's, those are our plans. We're trying to sell our family farm, if and when that happens. I'd like to get one of those little travel vans like Gord has. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just plop Sprock and I into it one day and go, right, and then come back. and. Uh, have some fun and see the countryside and, and have, you know, just relax a little bit and, and see the things that you've always wanted to see. I've been driving up here for 19 years and there's roads I have not driven down as I'm coming along 117. I'm thinking, I really wonder what's down there. Yeah. You know? Like today coming in, just before you get to the um, fields and like pastures, and there's a little bit of bush and stuff, just before you get to Tammy's house, I thought, that's a big black blob and a little black blob. And, I, and then some trees were there, and I went through again slower, and it's like, that's a bear. <laughs> so I backed up, and I made sure there was no, nobody coming behind me, and I sat there nice and quiet, and put the windows down, and I was watching the bear. The little cubs got, you know, scurried off, and, but the mama bear was eating away at um, what I'm assuming are blueberries, and then all of a sudden she stops and looks up, and looks over at me. I'm really glad there's a field and a half between us, and I'm in a car. <laughs> Did you smile? I sure did. <laughs> Get a ribbon for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <coughs> but, how but how about you? Well, yeah. We're constantly always taking inventory, you know. Yeah. And changing. Like the only thing that's consistent these days is change. True enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's interesting worrying about the kids' future, because I bet people in the 20s thought things were pretty great, and then the 30s hit, and things were pretty bad. Yeah. And you know, in the 50s and 60s, we thought everything was terrific, and then the 70s hit, and there was the oil crisis, and then people thought the world was going downhill as fast as it could. So. Yeah. Back, back and forth, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pendulum. Absolutely. And uh, you have to be careful about the news, because as the news will tell you, <laughs> they, they don't necessarily report the facts, it's crafted as entertainment, yeah. um, which is save them from a lot of massive lawsuits. <laughs> but you, know, you have, to, yeah. have to take it all with a big, huge grain of salt. Absolutely. The size of Utah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The pain constantly changes too because very yeah. right now environment is very high on the everyone's radar with the floods and the fires and yeah. everything going on. And Absolutely. Yeah. I think you worry about your children uh, and particularly your grandchildren because I think the world is in <coughs> very real shape with the wildfires, just with so 
so many things and not being able to buy a house and perhaps um, I guess you'll have a job all of the time, but um, you know, accumulating that money that you need to buy a house is just out of reach, I think. Um, yes, you can say you're going to leave money to your children, but I don't think you can buy a house under $800,000 now. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is up here, but uh, certainly in the city. It's a frightening situation, and people like me, I don't think we should think about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a young girl interviewed on the news one night. I think she was 24, and she said that she was going to look at another country to live in because she said she can't afford anything here. Mm -hmm. She can't get a full-time job. She can't get a house. She can't rent an apartment. She can't own a car. She can't pay for gas. The food, she said, is too expensive. And I, I never thought of it until I saw her on TV and talking that way. That, yeah, they've got a lot of challenges, you know, to face it. I don't think I ever remember facing those challenges. Mm -hmm. Well, if my future, when I think about, you know, just getting in one of those little vans, like, you know, Gord has and just taking off, I've been slowly downsizing. <laughs> <laughs> for that fact, but also for the fact that who wants to have to go through all my stuff? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Come time. So, yeah, so, you know, it's, there's different ways of looking at, you know, how the future and how it affects what you're thinking about, you know, as time goes along. So, who knows? That is my buy a horse for the kids. <laughs> Bruce? I think it's important. It's difficult to find the time to sit and think about it all, but it would be important not to succumb to the pressure that we put on ourselves because of what we see today. Because tomorrow is going to be a different day, no matter what it brings, good, bad, or otherwise. Um, to, to, uh, to fall into the lament of it, everything looks gloom and doom. What, what choices we have to make today, I think, and it's tough to do because of what you see all around you, we have to make choices that cause us to see the positive that really is still with us. We have to find it. Whereas maybe in the past it was coming to us more easily, we have to search it out. And then that would help you make choices today. Keep your mind positive. Yeah, that sounds really glossy and wonderful, doesn't it? Except, we have to live today, but we do have to look for tomorrow. And if you're looking in the right direction, you'll probably find it. I, I, I think it is not. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you get into a deep hole there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think, too, that uh, sometimes you think back and you think, oh, that's why I made that decision, because of what's happening now. You can see that Absolutely. Very good point, Joy. I, I still feel, though, that with the doom and gloom, you do need to get a bit of historical perspective. And not even like going back thousands of years, just going back to that, what I mentioned, the, the 1920s, things looked fantastic in North America. We thought it was just the greatest era ever. And then the 30s hit and the Great Depression and that plummeted us into a world war. And I'm sure a lot of people were convinced that was biblically the end. <laughs> yeah. It took that much to yank people around and to start you know, stepping forward and, and planning for a better future. Absolutely. And briefly, there was a much, much better future. Um, we gave up our dedication to that better future because we wanted to be rich. <laughs> so, you know, like it's still, you know, it's within us to do. And, it, it, and we've demonstrated before we can. Yes. So with all of the horrifying news and the I've got to move away and, and all of these terrible messages, it is within us to make it a better place. And we can do it. Absolutely. The worry about never owning a home 
I mean, Europeans laugh at us because they haven't owned homes for generations. <laughs> and everybody in Switzerland rents a house and their parents rented a house and their grandparents rented a house and the same house. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's just a different, it's a different way of living. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. So we need to let our positive out and let it flow. Yeah. Right? Just like, you know, yeah. um, Pluto used to tell us, you know, heads high, hearts open, wishing love to everyone that you meet. Yeah. And maybe we just have to focus on feeding the 5,000. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yes. Then maybe a Ferrari isn't the perfect family car. <laughs> <laughs> Not for pulling a horse trailer, anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move to our Ministry of Music with Michael and Nancy. Uh, <laughs> it was winter in this it's, one. <laughs> it's snowing in this one. <laughs> Today our scripture story begins with us being introduced to Joseph. Joseph is the oldest son of Jacob's beloved wife, Rachel. 
Now remember, Jacob's new name is Israel. And within these scriptures, we learn that Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other children. And one sign of this favoritism is the gift of that long robe with sleeves, a style that suggests royalty and means that Joseph would not have to work. Could you imagine the mayhem in your family if your father decided that you didn't have to work anymore? <laughs> Man, my sister would have had a fit. Man, she would have, oh, that would have been it. It was bad enough that I skipped out on my turn of doing the dishes when it was spaghetti night. And in my humble opinion, that was the worst night to have to do dishes. Anyway, back to Joseph. I digress. What this story is showing us is that Jacob's family is broken. And this brokenness leads to absurd and tragic events. This story of Joseph, his dreams and his robe are familiar to so many of us. And what perhaps is the most striking about this story is that in some way, we can all relate to it in our own lives and families. The family dynamics are broken of relation, of the family dynamics and brokenness of relationships are illustrated throughout this story. Many of us here will identify with the feelings of resentment and jealousy embodied in Joseph's brothers. We all know the destructive power of such feelings to our spirits and to our relationships and to the world. If you were to read Genesis 37, right through to verse 28, you would find that the missing verses give us, give to us the relevant background to the family dynamics between Joseph and his brothers. They describe Joseph's dreams, and without them we only hear that Joseph is a dreamer, and do not hear about the details of the dreams themselves. These omitted verses also connect Joseph's dreams and his brothers' hatred for him. Once, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers, they hated him even more. I'm sure Joseph's, Joseph's brothers had dreams of their own. But despite those dreams, they conspired to kill Joseph. Instead, thankfully, they find a, a less troubling and slightly profitable alternative by selling Joseph to Midianite traders, who in turn then bring Joseph to Egypt. Joseph enters life as an enslaved person in Egypt, where his dreams will again guide his path. It's not an easy task to be a dreamer or prophet in biblical times. And that, unfortunately, is still the case today. Joseph's own family, the people closest to him, they did not understand his gift. Think about some biblical prophets and contemporary prophets whose messages were or are met with challenge, with resistance and sometimes threats of danger and death. And I'm sure if we put our minds together, we could come up with an amazing list of prophets. Everyone from Miriam and Moses, Daniel and Jeremiah, John the Baptizer, Jesus, Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, Thomas Merton, Feel free to add to the list. Anybody pop out at you? David Suzuki. David Suzuki. Me. You, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we are surrounded by amazing people. So perhaps our dreams have been small. Perhaps we don't allow ourselves to dream big with our doubts and fears, diminishing our courage. I was down at Mom's the other day, and the commercial on was for a lottery, and it was like, dream big. Well, you know, maybe a car. <coughs> oh, no, dream bigger. Okay, maybe a fleet of cars or a helicopter. Well, now you've got it. We need to dream big. What would you do if you could take away all those shackles that hold you down? Imagine, just imagine them dropping off of you. How 
big can you dream? May we all allow ourselves healing of past failures and allow ourselves to soar with our imagination. Dream big. And may today be the day we dance in our dreams once again and spark our waking hours with visions. May it be so. Amen. <clears throat> Let's join in singing, I come with joy. Actually, Joy came in by herself today, but... <laughs> <laughs> Your generosity settles families. When Elmez Fesshey and her two young children arrived in Canada in 1991, they did not know what to expect. None of them knew the language or culture, but hoped and prayed that Canada would be a safer place than Eritrea, a war-torn country in eastern Africa. Leaving Eritrea could have could have meant the difference between life and death. Everyone had to be a soldier, Almaz describes, before sharing the somber note that people have died trying to escape. She was devastated to have to flee her home and frightened by not knowing what would come next. When Almaz and her two children, then aged four and six, arrived in Alberta, they were greeted with warmth and love by members of Gates Memorial United Church. They opened the gate for me. I have no words, she says with gratitude. They changed my life, starting from getting furniture, renting a place to live, helping me with the language and support for my kids. Almez describes the congregation and community as selfless and kind. The church was one block from the family's new home, and Almez says, my son was very forgetful, so I gave the church secretary an extra key. <laughs> <laughs> now settled in Red Deer, Alberta, Almaz is joyfully giving back, back to her community. She works in social services and offers her time as a volunteer with local programs that help people experiencing homelessness and poverty. She's also passionate about helping other refugees learn the local culture and language. Your gifts to mission and service help support life-changing programming and staffing to support families seeking safety. Almez has some words for many considering supporting refugee programs through mission and service. Don't think twice. It doesn't have to be millions. <clears throat> Whatever you, you give means a lot. If it's financial, educational, time, knowledge, it means a lot. 
You're saving the lives of human beings and making the world better. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, Barb. My friends, God has blessed each and every one of us in so many different ways. And we thank you for our offerings which are upon the plate, those that you give through par, and the time and energy that you give so freely to not only your church community, but to your family and your community at large. We are truly blessed. from all that keeps us tethered to our anger and resentments. Help us to participate in the grace you give us so freely every day. When our relationships are broken, help us to choose unity over our need to be right. When our work is more burden than a joy, help us to embrace it as an opportunity to learn. When we feel abandoned and alone, Show us the path to experiencing your profound and perpetual presence with us always. When our bodies are frail and sources of pain, help us to listen deeply to them and tend carefully to them with thanksgiving for the miracles that they are. When our spirits are diminished, help us to reach out to others for renewal and support. When our world seems too fractured and broken, help us to seek to be a part of the healing it needs. When we are overwhelmed by the challenges of the day, help us to slow down, breathe deeply, and take your loving hand. Guide us, we pray. Heal us, we pray. Anoint us, we pray. Help us to return to the possibility of rejoicing in how good and pleasant it is to be your people. Amen. Our departing hymn for this morning is from More Voices, number 98, Like a River of Tears.
like a wind in the forest that breathes life among us, like a phoenix that's rising from ashes around us, renewing our spirits with vision and Like a pillar of cloud, you promise to guide us. Like a bright fiery bush, you come to renew us. Like a cooling breeze, your spirit breathes in us. Renew our spirits with loving embrace. Like a lover's caress, your spirit revives us. Like the song of the soul, you come to be Oh. <laughs>